To avoid heart disease, you avoid smoking. To avoid obesity, you watch your diet. To avoid depression, you seek mental health support. But to avoid all these illnesses, would you consider getting more sleep? It may not be advice that immediately springs to mind, but researchers who have found out just how risky sleep deprivation is would tell you to go to bed. Studies show that sleeping fewer than six hours a night could increase the risk of suffering a heart attack by up to 50% and an 11% higher risk of hypertension and a 50% higher chance of an early death. Yet despite years of clinical data, so many people lack sleep that doctors are calling it a public health crisis. In the US, almost a third of Americans say they are sleep deprived. And half of those who sleep fewer than seven hours every weekday have symptoms of depression. But it's right here in Asia where people are staying awake longer. Asian sleep on average six and a half hours, that's 30 minutes shorter than most other countries. The impact on society can be counted in billions of dollars. Chronic insomnia can cause an average loss in workplace productivity of between 45 to 54 days. That translates to an economic loss of 200 billion dollars in the US, 41 billion dollars in the UK and 19 billion dollars in Australia. In this special three-part series, we'll show you how to adjust your lifestyle to make more time for sleep and investigate new methods to address the most common sleep disorders, insomnia and apnea. And Dr. Stein Massa joins us in the studio to talk this through. He is research assistant professor at the Sleep and Cognition Laboratory in the National University of Singapore. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. Now, one could define crisis in several different ways. But is sleeping six and a half hours a night necessarily a public health crisis? So, personally, I don't really like the term crisis because it like implies a sudden urgent situation but like when we look at sleep the problem is a problem that has sat with us for much longer time it's much more ingrained in our society and much more ingrained in our in our culture so if we look at like basically all of the studies um looking at sleep habits over the world then singapore usually comes out like somewhere at the bottom and um well this is like true like for like um, us, like um, working adults, but it's also true for children and for the uh, for the uh, for the high school kids who presumably need more sleep. So it is a much more pervasive uh, problem that like has lingered on but for a while. Could, one could argue because it's so pervasive, because pervasive and ingrained, as you say, mm. part of our very social fabric almost. It is even more of a crisis than something that came and went as COVID-19 as an example. I, I would say it's, 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 it's still very important and it's still something that we need to pay much more attention to, but like it's very easy to, um, to lose sight of uh, as, as a problem because it is like so, um, so, um, so it, it, it is so, um, so pervasive in society. When you talk about Singapore, in a mm. way, uh, as an expression or a reflection of how much this is a problem of how we live and how we see what we are, if we look across other Asian countries, we see a similar problem and for you, for similar reasons. Yeah, that's, that's right. Like, if we look at like, other countries, then what we see, like the countries that always end up at the bottom, Singapore, but also China, Japan, Korea, and all of these countries like have in common that there is a very strong working culture, a, a, a culture of like hard work, long hours, and high competition. And on top of that, there is also like a culture of um, availability. So one, even after office hours, one has to remain available for um, crisis situations or like. Um, uh, um, ad, ad hoc requests from the bosses and all of this like makes that as societies we don't have much time for our rests but we don't have, don't have much time for you, you know earlier we look in those figures right 50 percent uh, greater risk of hypertension or heart attacks 
you'd think, right, that something like that would make us, as you say, more prepared to value rest. But somehow we end up valuing more what our employers might think of us so that we make ourselves available out of work hours, although it may technically not be on regulations, that we're still more prepared to do that. Right, yeah. So it's, Lack of value for rest. It, it's, it's definitely like as a society, we would be better off if we would value rest a little bit more. And we don't, I mean, look, look at the studies that you have done, for example, uh, using uh, devices, using incentives. Uh, one of your findings was that there were no, maybe momentarily, uh, temporarily, there might have been some effect, there might have affected some shit, but somehow, uh, I think you also pointed out, unless they see that I have real interest in investing in more sleep, uh, just giving me some economic incentive for a few weeks, that made no real changes to my behavior. That is true. Like in the end, people are still strong by work uh, obligations, family obligations, and all of these are very important. But if it goes at the expense of our health and our well-being, we must think what is, um, how, how much can we invest in improving Okay, I, I, I'll take you on improving because uh, mm. earlier we just talked about duration of sleep. But That's right. in fact, there are many other metrics that we need to be looking at if we want good quality efficiency. Very quickly run me through them because I want time for a final question. Right. Yeah. right. So, well, if you look at duration, then it's just like how long do you sleep? When did you go to bed? When did you wake up? But another variable that is important is the variability in sleep. So from day to day, how much does that timing differ or how much does that duration differ? And um, another important metric is sleep efficiency. So like how often do you wake up during the night and how uh, long does it take you to fall asleep? Now, all of these are as associated with health um, risks and health benefits uh, or even more and uh, sleep duration alone. All right. Uh, so if we look at all these different measures, uh, if we change health behavior, uh, and it's difficult, as you say, of all the health behaviors. Some of us, when it has to do with sleep, people just don't see it as that important. So much as neither of us likes the word, calling it crisis, that might make the change that we want to see. Final I, question. I do agree with you. Like, like, like there is a problem that needs to be addressed and um, more attention to it is very important. Because as you say, otherwise the balance might Right now, it's six and a half. If we're not careful, it could be three. Right. Like, better, um, we better push it towards more towards seven than more towards six right, or at less. At this point, uh, uh, earlier rather than later, and late better than never. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Steinmasser. He's a research assistant professor at the Sleep and Cognition, Cognition Lab Laboratory in the National University of Singapore. Thanks for coming this evening.